video. Um, <laughs> there's, I mean, there's a thing of like, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to take a lot of flack for this, but anyway, I'll say it anyway. So, um, you know, I mean, it has also been mentioned in a way. There, there is the, the you know, the, the, there are certain, I mean, I call them, uh, <clears throat> I mean, ultimately how, you know, you could say the video is about spiritual discernment, but at also different levels of spiritual consciousness. As, as, a, as a spiritual student evolves, it's like they're, they're asked to do service for the higher and higher, for the highest good. Now this becomes, it seems like a conflict because, you know, as you spiritually evolve, it's very, very hard for a lot of people because they, they have their current family associations and they have their current f friends and circles who know them at their prior <coughs> at their prior levels of consciousness. So as you evolve, you, it's like your soul wants to like serve a higher purpose, and this can lead to a lot of conflict with friends and family uh, as deeper callings start to emerge within the soul to serve in a different way. And so the, you know this thing. I normally when I when I work with people, I normally call it like codependent guilt. You know the guilt of like um, the guilt of making it's, it's going to sound cold, but making people your higher power so that you have to serve them before you serve God or yourself. You see, so it's like well I can't leave them because you know I have to be there for them all the time and sacrifice for them no matter what, and I'm going to feel guilty if I'm not. And not sort of like being their servant 24 hours a day. You know, it's going to be too difficult. I feel too much pain, too much guilt. I've just got to sacrifice for them endlessly because they're my son or they're my um, <clears throat> they're my best friend from school or whatever it is. So, and then you feel these deeper yearnings in the soul to do something, which I call uh, you can feel it intuitively would be of greater service to the highest good, but would make a family member pissed off or make your best friend pissed off. It's like my birthday, how dare you go and feed the homeless on my birthday? You should be here buying me a birthday present and giving all your attention to me. You should feel very guilty if, you do, if you're not here for me on my birthday. So these kind of karmic contracts, and you're, and you're evolving. And I think, I mean, this has been, this, and this, you know, and you, you get a lot of flack because, you know, People will leave their families for this higher calling, or they will go into these spiritual states. Or, I mean, I think if you look at Jesus, you know, um, <clears throat> to, I mean, for his family, I'm just making this up, but I guess, you know, he had the choice of not going on the cross. I suppose, you know, you could say, like, his best friend from in carpentry, carpentry school would have probably said, like, hey, we should carry on going to the local pub. <laughs> <laughs> and you just tell them, just tell them all the stuff you said is rubbish, you don't need to go on the cross. Uh, but, you know, there's a higher, there's something higher that, that calls you and you feel like, no, for that, I'm going to have to burn some people who expect me to be there for them because I feel a higher calling to do something. I'm not saying it's an easy one. How do you resolve it? Through spiritual discernment and through muscle testing. Because sometimes it's like, you know, don't go on the cross make your best friend happy and so you can, he can carry on being best friends with you and sometimes it is like you can't, you, you have a higher calling and it'll seem like it'll hurt people but it's for the higher good and ultimately when you do something for a higher good for me actually it's like the thing of like personal love versus you know universal love you know it's very very difficult and when, you, when you're evolving spiritually rapidly um, you know, it, it can create a lot of pain to family members and to friends and to people who know you. Because they've always known you, you put them first, you're always there for them, they expect you to be there, and then they suddenly see you like, you know, you can't, what are you doing helping these strangers on the street? You know, what are you doing going out there preaching and not putting me first? So, you know, that then becomes like a conflict in people who are spiritually growing rapidly. And people will often judge them and say, like, you're heartless, you know, on, 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 you know, it was your friend's best birthday and you just went out and gave sandwiches to people in the street. You know, how could you let your friend down? He was sobbing at home, you know. Uh, so, but I always think, you know, again, it's like, um, I think with these things, 
either having a spiritual mentor or muscle testing or praying, you'll start to get, um, one of the things is you start to learn spiritual discernment from your own inner intuition and guidance. When you, when you have a, an, you'll start to get intuitive guidance and whenever you do it, you know you're, you're following your higher self. Um, and this is very important in codependency or codependent guilt, you know, because the codependent guilt is when you feel like, you know, to let someone down, you feel horrific pain to let anyone down. But something deeper is calling you to do something of a higher nature. And then you've got to trust that. So, and you do get this thing, in trust at recovery, people just leave friends, leave certain relationships, and they're encouraged to do so because those no longer serve their higher level of consciousness. So people, they'll be there to support you. So now in this context, it's okay, you don't need to feel guilty. You know, your best friend is a drug dealer uh, and uh, just eats donuts all day, and, you know, helping this person save their soul, it's okay, you don't need to feel guilty. You, you know, uh, even if they if they blame you and they think it's the wrong thing to do, it's time now to leave leave that that relationship. And you don't need to feel guilty, so they can sort of tell you that. But it is very difficult. There's not a black and white answer. I'm not saying there's a black and white <coughs> answer, but uh, if you pursue, it's the thing of. Uh, I think that's the thing of personal love and developing universal love. And, uh, and as you develop, evolve rapidly, you have to go through it. Having a mentor or someone who can do muscle testing or developing your own spiritual guidance is to know like, when is the right time now not to put them first and now to let the higher calling uh, do it. And also, I think the important thing I've said to people is you can drop the guilt. It's okay, you don't need to feel guilty. You're doing the right thing. Otherwise, you think it's good to be guilty. Also, now with guilt, I say it to everyone, I mean, <coughs> Wallowing in guilt serves no purpose. It's like, that's the thing of, we've all got conditioned with the punishing God, like God is happy if you feel guilty. You know, I'm making God happy by feeling guilty and hitting myself on the head the whole day. God, you know, I'm a bad boy, let me hit my head on the whole day and feel guilty. It's a vibration which, attract, which attracts the need for punishment from the universe. So you don't resonate. <clears throat> Just acknowledge it, <clears throat> let it go, get some guidance and do the right thing and don't, don't because that's, an, that's a vibration that attracts very bad things if you wallow in guilt. So feel it out and, and let go. And if you, if, if you know you're doing the right thing, then you're doing the right thing. Because sometimes the right thing is to not help your best friend or your family member and do the thing you're solely, and then you don't need to hold on to the guilt. Um, because your ego will want to hold on to the guilt. But that's the thing of personal love. And, you know, most of us in, you know, romantic relationships for me are ba usually based on wanting to be special in a relationship. You want to date me, I have to be the most important person in your life. I don't want you to, you know, like everything for, is about me. You should worship me. And if you don't worship me, I'm going to dump you. That's, I think, a lot of what we're taught in society, you know. So it's like, uh, you know, so, um, so universal love, as you develop, Universal, there's an intelligence in universal love. You can still have a relationship with universal love, but it, it is letting go of personal love as well. 